So welcome back and we'll pick up where we left off. So in the previous video lecture we got to the stage where we selected the tables or queries that we wanted to import into the data model and we had selected the customers, the products and the sales queries based on the tables from the access database above. Currently I have selected customers and if we just click on preview and filter it will show us a snapshot of the column headers and I think it's about 50 rows of the data so it's by no means all of the data but it gives us a snapshot of all of the columns and it's at this point that we can choose which columns of data we want to import into the data model. Now you can see beside the column headers if I just hover over the top it reveals the name of the column header itself and a tick box beside it. This is indicative that these columns that are selected will be loaded into the data model. Now you can resize if you choose but as I say just by hovering over a column header it gives you a little call out that tells you the name of the column header itself and then we just use the horizontal scroll bar just to scroll to the right. So if we don't want to import data all we have to do is deselect. So I'm currently towards the end of the columns and I'm going to deselect because I don't think I'm going to need number cars owned. Um, the address line I'm not going to need so I'm going to deselect address line 1, address line 2. This one looks like a phone number and again I'm going to deselect that one and the first date purchased. I'll deselect that. Now don't worry if you're not sure whether you're going to need these columns of data or not or if, you, if you're worried you know can I change my mind absolutely yes you can. So don't worry too much you know it's, it's not set in stone you can always come back and reselect the data if you want to re-import it or import it. Just to recap there, so it's number cars owned, address line one, address line two, phone and date first purchase. So I've deselected those which means I'm not going to import those into the data model and just click on OK. Now back in the table import wizard window you'll see the filters have been applied Okay, by this applied filters. Another thing you can do is the friendly lane. For example, the DIM in the tables above, DIM stands for dimension. Now that means a lot to anyone that's a database administrator. But if we imported that particular table into the data model, then it's not so friendly for a user. So we can just click in there and if we were importing DIM calendar, we can get rid of that DIM nomenclature. Same here for dim customers, dimension customers. For the sake of the end user, we can just give it a more friendly name. But we're not importing those, so I'm going to deselect. So you can change the name of the queries or the tables just by clicking into the friendly name. But we're quite happy with customers, products and sales. So just preview and filter any of the data before you import it. And just to recap, don't worry too much because you can always come back and make changes. Just while we're here, what you can do is filter. So for example, let's just preview and filter the sales table. And if we just scroll along to the right, right to the very end, we've got a region month ID. Now let's just say we didn't want all of those. We want to filter out certain categories within the drop down. Let's try Southwest 10. And is there a 9? Southwest 9? Am I missing it? Probably down here, Southwest 9. So we could just filter out any of the data in the existing column that we wanted to import into the data model. I'm quite happy just to leave that as, as is. So I'll just cancel out of that. When you're happy with your data selection, you just click on finish. And it's at this point 
that all the importing goes on in the background and we have a success. So we can see up here that in total we've got three queries or tables selected. We've got success on all three. Nothing was cancelled, there's no errors and it also tells us how many rows of data have been transferred over. So it's all looking really good and we'll just click on close. And this is it guys. I'm just going to double click that window just so that I can see at the bottom our three tables in different tabs. So our customers tab, our products and our sales. And you can probably already see in the status bar here that in the customers table we have 18,484 records. And if I click on the first cell in the first column and I'm using the control key and the down arrow on my keyboard and it's scooted us all the way down to the last record and indeed there's 18,484. So control key down and using the up arrow takes me right back to the top of that column. We go to products, 397 records. We go to sales and there's 60,398 records. So I'm gonna go back to customers and we can see from the start to finish. So the first column is customer key, the last one is house owner flag. We go to products. It's not quite so easy to see the first one, which is quite clear there, but can't see the end without the end column without scrolling right over. So sometimes it's quite difficult to locate a particular column. But if we're under the very first column, just above it is a little drop down. And in alphabetical order, it will list all of the columns. So we can quickly locate any of the columns. If you've got lots and lots of rows, so our last row is category, for example. And if we were looking for that, couldn't find it in a really large data set, then we could locate it in the alphabetical list and it would take us directly to it. So it's a handy little tool, I really, really like that. So let's just take a moment to home in on our menu options. So currently I'm on the Home tab. We've got our Get External Data, Refresh. Now I'll point out here what Refresh actually does. I'm just gonna scroll right back to the first column. And if you click into the any cell, it doesn't really matter, and try to make any changes, I'm just clicking to try and change this this figure and nothing's happening. Same, any of the columns. You cannot edit in the data window any of the data. This is a huge shift. Your mindset from Excel to the data model window. The only way that you can change data is by changing the source data. In our case, that's the AdventureWorks Access Database. So any changes any edits has to be performed in the Access Database. And then when you click on Refresh, you've got Refresh or Refresh All. So if you've made lots of changes to the different tables, you'd Refresh All in just one table, just a simple refresh would do. And those imports, those changes rather, would take effect and you'd see the updates to the data there. Okay, so it's quite a shift from what you're used to in the Excel window. It's good for data integrity, guys. I'll come back to formatting in just a sec, but also next to that in this sort of filter group, it's quite self-explanatory. We'll click on a column heading and we can sort smallest to largest, largest to smallest. If you want to find some data, pretty straightforward, self-explanatory. We've got some auto sum. Now, for those of you who have opened up your data model window and it isn't divided into these two sections. I can just click on that and drag this up. Over here on the far right is a view group. Now, if the calculation area button isn't turned on, you won't see a divide in your window. If you click on calculation area, it just splits the window. The data's not gone, it's just scrolling behind. But the calculation area is where we can insert some measures or calculated fields that are the same thing. Um, 2013 they're called calculated fields. In 2010 and 2016 
they're known as measures. This will become a little bit clearer as we progress through the course. When we start creating measures, they will appear in the calculation area of the table that we have added them to. So if I create a measure in the sales table, it appears on the sales tab in the calculation area at the bottom here. I'm currently on the sales table and I want to talk to you a little bit about formatting. If I click into the order date column, I can just double click, auto fit works just the same in the data model as it does in Excel. By default, it brings in the time, the date and the time. So we want to change that. So in the formatting group, we've got a date category, which is great. That's what we want. But underneath, we just click on the drop down. And instead of the time coming in with the date, we just want the second option down, which um, for UK purposes. So choose your date format. And then going along the order date key, not sure about that. We're never going to calculate on that. So that's a whole number that should be fine. Customer key, again, we're never going to uh, create any calculations on that one. What I'm really interested in is anything that has currency. So unit price, I'm just going to select unit price and it tells me it's a decimal number. Now, in smaller data sets, this is not really going to make a, a, a huge amount of difference, but decimal numbers do take up more space in terms of storage than a currency field. So we're going to change that to currency. And it says here that the data type is about to be changed for the column, and this will affect how the data is stored. And it might impact data position or result in data loss. After the change occurs, the original values cannot be restored unless the table is refreshed. Are you sure you want to continue? Well, in this instance, we're not really too bothered, really, because our data set is relatively small. It's approximately 60,000 rows. If we had tens or hundreds of millions of rows, then it would be quite significant in terms of storage and memory access, etc. However, it will be up to you. If your data set is, is relatively small, I'd say under a million rows of data, it's not going to make many odds. If I click on to extended amount, decimal number, I'm going to change to currency. Yes, again. And there's the currency down here. And also you can change it from here if it's United States, UK, Euro, etc, etc. There's some more formats there if you want to change. There's quite quite a host of of currency formats. Okay. Now we did those separately, unit price and extended amount. But we've got product cost, total product cost, sales amount, tax and freight. So there's five columns of data that are all currency. So instead of doing them individually, I can just click and highlight all of them and do all of them together. So I change them all to currency and then I'm going to change it if it doesn't update automatically to, in my instance, UK sterling. So this video lecture is getting a little bit long so I'm going to stop it there and in the upcoming video lecture we're going to have a look at how we remove and filter fields after we've imported data. Okay so I'll see you in the next vid.